getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. She hath opened her mouth to wisdom, and the law of clemency is on her tongue. Dear brothers and sisters of Christ, we have the great pleasure of celebrating the Mass, especially for those who are Scottish, born in Scotland today, the patron. We celebrate St. Margaret of Scotland, who is known as the, the Pearl, the Pearl of Scotland. This is the word we read in the Holy Gospel when we find the precious pearl, the word in Latin, Margaritas, St. Margaret, the Pearl of Scotland. She was in fact an English princess, born in Hungary in the year 1045 to Princess Agatha of Hungary and Prince Edward of England. But when she was 10 years old, her family returned to these isles, to England, because her father was a potential successor to the throne. However, Edward died shortly after their arrival, her father. In 1066, this famous year in this country, the Norman Conquest, Margaret's mother fled with her family to Scotland to seek shelter. Malcolm, the King of Scotland, welcomed the family to his country. Though she wished, had this ardent desire to enter religious life, through the persuasion of her brother, she accepted the hand of marriage of Malcolm the King. From a young age then, Margaret had fostered a beautiful love for the scripture, which she carried into her marriage with Malcolm and her queenship of Scotland. Though as queen, she had much wealth around her. She valued good works above all, above her riches, and sought God Almighty before all things. She called for church councils, of which she would lovingly herself correct these councils using scripture and teachings of the church fathers, religious abuses and errors in teachings were eradicated. Through her gentle yet firm nature, an example of her life, her holy life, she greatly influenced her husband who tended to have a strong temper. Malcolm became then more virtuous through the wife, more attentive to works of justice, mercy and almsgiving and altogether more prayerful. Together they fed the hungry and served the poor, putting their faith into action as they led this nation of Scotland. Malcolm placed her in charge of all domestic affairs and often consulted her on state affairs as well. Though she had a multitude of responsibilities as queen, she did not neglect to train her eight children, eight children, magnificent, deeply in virtue. She taught them frequently about Christ, Jesus Christ, and exhorted them to always love him. Though she lived as royalty, she sought always to preserve her humility, never losing sight of the transitory nature of life. She kept this beautiful scripture in her heart, James 4.15 which says, for what is our life? It is a vapor which appeareth for a little while and afterwards shall vanish away. In, 12, in the year 1093, Malcolm and their oldest son died in battle. Instead of crying out to God with sorrow, Margaret, who had already had a severe illness from all the fasting she did, cried out, to the Lord, I give praise and thanks to thee, almighty God, for thou hast been pleased that I should endure such deep sorrow at my departing. And I trust that by means of this suffering, it is thy pleasure that I should be cleansed from some of the stains of my sins. Four days later then, November 16th, 1093, Margaret passed away after living a full life of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. She was a magnificent example for us to emulate today. Whenever she went out, 
Crowds of the poor would gather around her in her life and none would depart without being comforted. Through the influence she had on her husband's leadership and character, she became then a light to this Scottish nation. She did not, though, forget about her English roots, the people of her heritage. She often would send spies to England. She would send spies to see the English slaves who were being oppressed and then would pay their ransom, giving them freedom. Margaret was wisely recognized Margaret wisely recognized what reforms the Scottish Church needed and would diligently defend the truth with these two beautiful virtues of humility and courage. She did not bring a new religion to Scotland, but gave new life to the religion that she found there, the Catholic faith. Thus, Margaret, guided by Jesus Christ, brought renewed hope and faith during what was time of desolation for many Scottish and English people. Margaret's life also proves exemplary in the way she mothered her children. Above all else, she valued their growth in virtue and desired that they come to love God. This is what we spoke about yesterday, the need to pray. There's no point in being an activist and running around like a chicken without a head. You have to be holy first. If you are holy, then all your works will bear fruit. She taught them to love the Lord, her children. In modern times, the emphasis on raising children tends to be on their worldly success, how high their grades are, and what colleges they are accepted to, what job they will pursue. In contrast secular con to these secular concerns is these St. Margaret prayed daily that her children might confess their maker through the faith which, work, which works by love, that confessing that they might, might worship him, worshiping might love him in all things and above all things, and loving might attain to the glory of the heavenly kingdom. This prayer is a model of what parents should pray now for the children, first and foremost, it's the salvation of the children's souls. This is the first priority, and the parents should be the first educator. Finally, St. Margaret exhibited unlimited generosity of self. She strove in all ways to use everything she had for the good of others. And she diligently studied God's word and church's teachings. She sought to share what she ha had learned to instruct others and to use her knowledge to lead fairly. She had a zeal for giving to the poor, always desiring to offer them more. She was poorer than any of her paupers, for they, even when they had nothing, wished to have something, while her anxiety was to strip herself of everything that she had. This attitude of wholehearted giving presents a refreshing contrast we see to this attitudes of the world, self-seeking, hedonistic culture of today's world. Whenever Margaret gave alms, she did so in secrecy. Today, in a society obsessed with appearances, she serves as a light of inspiration to give from the heart and not for the sake of publicity, for honor or one's own vain glory. Over all her commitment to her roles as spouse and parent and her service to the poor offers pearls of wisdom to the modern day life, this pearl of Scotland. She lived a life of deep prayer with her eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, our savior at every moment. Yet she did not keep her prayerfulness to herself, but instead she sought to spread God's love to all the corners of her influence, from her husband to her children, to the poorest of the poor. Not only would she have given to the poor all that she possessed, but if she could have done so, she would have given her very self away. This is what we see, Jesus Christ on the cross. St. Margaret's life then models especially the life of the beautiful lady dressed in blue, Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, a life of self-giving,
to be crucified to Jesus Christ for the salvation of all souls. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.